Hello everybody, Stuart here from Stubu Gaming. Today I'm playing Warhammer Chaos Spain. This released yesterday, which was the 31st of May, um, if you pre-ordered either the Digital or the Magus edition. Um, and uh, basically you got to play it five days before everybody else. So the game officially releases retail um, on the 4th of June. So this is kind of a, a pre-look for those people who didn't pre-order the advanced editions. So I'm playing as the Dwarven Slayer, um, Braggy Axe Biter, I think his name is. I've got him up to level 10. Uh, this is actually my second character because I do have a character I'm using to play along with a friend of mine. So this is my solo character. Uh, I'm slightly behind the story in comparison to my other character, so I can skip the dialogue, um, which I probably will do just so I don't spoil it for anyone who hasn't got the game yet. So. Let's have a look at the uh, the game itself. Graphically, it's really nice. Um, I thought the beta was nice, but if I'm not mistaken, it does seem to be even better than it was. Um, there are some really nice looks to the character. So uh, the helmet that I'm currently using is one of the pre-order benefits, so not everyone will have that, unfortunately. Um, it does come under your skills for some strange reason. We have an interesting skill system. So unlike every other game that I've played where you spend points on a skill, you unlock that skill and you can use it. In this, you unlock skills as you level, just like you do in Diablo 3. But each skill has a point, a point system allocated to it. So if I select my primary skill, all of my entry-level primary skills have zero skill point cost, which is the number in black in the top left hand corner of the image which turns white when you highlight it as you level those skills up they start gaining skill point requirements and the level is also stated on the inside of the, the image so that one is a level 18 requirement and it costs eight skill points so at level 18 i will unlock that skill i then choose whether i select it or not so for my primary resource generating skill I'm currently using the entry level. I haven't changed to the Savage Swing, so I will put the secondary tier skill on for that particular one. As I leveled my character up and got to certain parts of the story, I actually ended up unlocking God skills and a God tier. So God skills are found on a completely different skill tree. Once you unlock them, they then appear in this skills list in effect. It seems quite complicated, but it does it does work and it's quite intuitive while you're using it so these god skills down here actually appear if i press r1 three times they appear in the god skill tree now this opens up at a certain point in the story and once you get to that point in the story you then have access to this skills list now you have fate points which are these down here if you can see where the cursor is I've got two left that I can spend and any node that's the grey ones you can't spend whereas the ones with the little gold circle around it's quite hard to see but you can spend on those now the bigger nodes have a negative so if you go to one of the bigger nodes they have quite a big positive in some respects and negative in other respects so I'm currently working my way towards Death Wish, which the lower your health, the more damage is increased. So I'm going to buy those two skills, which will allow me to unlock that one when I get another favor point. So for passive skills, you have Collector's Guild skills, which I'll go into in a few minutes. Passive God skills, which is where you'll get your Death Wish that I was just looking at, or Unstoppable, etc, etc. All unlock through the God Skill Tree. And then you have your passive abilities. And some of them are really quite useful. So, Rage Lasting Longer, or Maximum Energy. So I'm actually going to change my first primary skill to my Maximum Energy. Because Rage Lasting Longer is useful, but... As it stands at the moment, I think my energy is what's causing me problems. I then also have 
a collector skills skill which gives me extra experience. Now these fan skills which are in the bottom right hand corner I believe, um, I might be wrong, but I believe these are specific to the season pass. At least some of these abilities are. And I've got my headgear appearance, so that's that's the headgear that I'm currently uh So if I take that off, you can see that my headgear completely changes. Okay, so that's basic skill tree. Let's get to the gameplay. That's the uh the part that everybody wants to see, I would imagine. So the dwarf slayer is definitely a melee class, but he's not a heavy melee class. As in, he can't tank. He's not very good at tanking. He's a damage dealer first and foremost. So that's my first god skill. Which of course does a lot of damage. Um, Let's give them level of speed. Unlike some games in the ARPG genre, this one treats death in a completely different way. So Diablo, for instance, will have you lose experience um, for dying and cash. This one gives you a choice. You can either use cash or your fragments to revive yourself, where you lose nothing and enemies um, stay where they were, you know, as far as health is concerned, etc. Or you can give up. Now, if you give up, it finishes that mission basically. You no longer are on that mission, you have to restart it completely. Which is an interesting take on it, because I know if you give up in Diablo, you go back to town, you just have to run back to where you were, and you're still in the same position, the enemies that you've killed are still dead, etc. This is more like an MMO style instance system. So you go into a specific instance of the map and if you leave, the instance reloads. So it doesn't track what you've killed or where you've got to, for instance. There you go, you can see in the bottom left hand corner I've unlocked Last Bastion Superior. So my War Shout, which gives me extra health, I've now unlocked the next tier of that ability. So if we go back into skills and go to Last Bastion, I have five points left and it's costing five points more. So I can actually start using that one straight away. So now my war cry not only grants maximum health boost and energy and rage, it also heals based on rage level. If I go into status it'll show better. So my rage, build rage charges by using skills it can go up to 20. Provides a damage bonus based on number of charges. Alright, so first and foremost, let's change to the enhanced version. Okay, so I'm finally out of the sewers. Um, I'm not going to speak to him just yet, because uh, I wanted to show you the Collector's Guild first. So, at a certain part of the story, I think it's just after you turn level 3, you unlock what I thought was going to be a store. Um, but it actually turns out to be the Collector's Guild. Now, you can trade and do relicants later but unfortunately as you can see they're locked for me currently so all I have is donation now I found quite a bit of uh, equipment while I was in that particular um, battle so I can donate all of those items now you have two options you can either go into each individual area select the items that you want to trade um, a little cross comes in the bottom right hand corner of the picture um, and then you can press triangle to confirm and it will transfer those selected items. Or they have implemented a quick trade system which basically allows you to get rid of all of a certain type. So you've got common which are the grey, uncommon which may be the blue, I'm not sure. Um, rare which uh, is either the blue or is a different colour I haven't seen. And heroic which I think are the gold ones. Not entirely sure at this stage, but none of the ones that I've got are actually... Let's try trade common. Right, so that hasn't got rid of the blue. Let's try rare. 
Okay, so that also didn't get rid of the blue ones. So it's not rare. They've got to be uncommon. These are probably rare. Because I've got quite a few of these. And if they're heroic, I, I really would like to see what the uh, the rare ones are like. But there we go. That's I don't think there's much else to show you at the moment. I've only just started the game really, so... Um, there's probably quite a few options which are still locked, so I can't go through them. Pretty good game. I am enjoying it. It's uh, definitely better with two people. I'm currently playing on very hard difficulty. You can't play on chaos difficulty until um, I think you've probably completed the game on very hard. Um, so I am playing on very hard, and one player, it's ridiculous, to be fair. There are benefits, so your Collector's Guild level is account-wide, so if you start a new character, you will still have the same reputation level. Once you unlock God Skills tree with one character, so this, this tree here, it will be unlocked with all characters. So you will still be able to level up your God Skills. It does give you a bonus uh, and a boost before you start. This character wouldn't be able to use any god skills if I hadn't already unlocked it with my other character because I haven't reached that stage in the story with this character yet. Um, so that's also a bonus. And your shards and gold are also shared across accounts as well. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please make sure you click the like button. If you're new to the channel and you're interested in loot-based games, ARPGs or anything of that nature, um, I also cover games like Borderlands um, in case you're interested in loot shooters. So, um, sorry, my mic went a bit crackly there. Um, so yeah, I also cover loot-based shooters like Borderlands if you are interested. Um, so again, please do subscribe if you are um, and please also make sure you click the uh, bell icon so you're notified when I do upload um, Otherwise, you've got to go through your subscription list and if you've got a lot of subscriptions that can get quite tedious well, There we go. Thanks for watching again. I do look forward to seeing you for my next video and I will see you soon. Bye for now